Turning your Raspberry Pi into a Kali Linux laptop with a lap dock. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Moore. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. Yes, it is. And you know what? Last hmm? week, I saw you carrying around this cute little laptop. Oh. And I wanted to find out what this thing is because yeah, it's well, adorable. Oh, OK. Oh, so my God. Remember when we went to CES in like 2009 and Sony was showing off like some $1,600 netbook that no one was going to buy? Yeah. Well, it turns out no one bought it, and so now it's like 300 on Amazon. I would totally buy this thing. I could stick this in my purse. Don't emasculate my and crypto And I can carry it with top. me, and it'll be a little purse. It'll be my purse laptop. This is an air gap machine used for... It's, you don't even... Yeah. It's no, an actually, air gap guess, machine? Yes. Well, that's, that's cool. That's the idea. Um, I like air gap machines. I have a small laptop, too. Inexpensive and fun. I love cheap thrills, so lay it on me. He would. <laughs> so you remember Kelly Linux, right? Kelly Lewis? <laughs> yes, exactly. So <laughs> what was that? Was that back in four? It was 1408. So I did this whole episode about a review of Kali Linux, uh, which is basically a pen testing Linux. Uh, and it's a newer version of Backtrack as well. It's basically. the new name of Backtrack. And it's based on Debian. Eee. So this means that we can also put it on a Raspberry Pi. It's so cool to see all of, like the the amount of architectures that Kali has been ported to. Yeah, you've got you know builds for all these tiny little ARM devices, which is fantastic because we're kind of starting to live in an ARM world. Like, yeah. have you seen it on the Note 10? It's really cool. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I want to try putting it on the Note 10. That would be really well. Really fun. I'm glad that you've been able to take. And actually, this is the. Uh, what is this? This is the Raspberry Pi. Yep, that that's the Raspberry Pi in a little case. This one was given to me by the Wireless Village from DEF CON. Was it? After uh, Sebastian and I gave that's a talk awesome. there. And that was like the coolest gift. And I'm glad that we we're able to put it to good use. And it, it seems only apt that would take the, uh, the Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, the um, Wireless Village uh, Raspberry <laughs> Pi and turn it into a Kali Linux box. That's perfect. So my first thought on this was why don't we try putting the Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi and then porting this onto the Motorola Atrix lab dock so that we can use it as a laptop. All right, Does tell that me make about sense? No, no, it makes, it makes <laughs> a lot of sense because this is just okay. a kind of a headless device. You've just it got is. HDMI out and USB in. But you in. still need some, like a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard. And since it takes USB mouse and keyboard and uh, the monitor, which is HDMI out, I believe, I can plug it into the Motorola Atrix, which, which is just a um, Atrix lab dock. Mm -hmm. And I can run everything on Kali Linux onto this monitor right here. So I remember oh, when these so laptop when these first came out, the idea with these was like, oh, you you get this, and then you know you plug your cell phone. Yeah, you you've put got your cell to get you've got there. to get the special cell phone. But yeah. if you've got the one special cell phone for it, you plug that into there, and now. Like this is this is like one of those things in server environments where you find where you like pull out and there's a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor <laughs> that flips up. Exactly. It's the same kind of idea. It is. Except they had some funky proprietary connectors. Yeah, and, and since it was only for the Atrix, we ran into it, that issue where the Atrix got discontinued. And but also now this thing failed. These. This failed bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> Motorola, but it cool idea. Maybe if there was like a universal standard for it to work with all Android phones, it may have done that, better. Yeah, I agree. That would have been cool, but. Since we found a second device and a second way to be able to use this now, I think we have quite a few of these maybe that we could put in the hack shop or something. Yeah, sure. We got a couple of yeah. them. I mean, the thing is, I love the idea of breathing new life into old hardware that it was not expected to perform. Me too. Um, and now that they, like, they, I forget what they were, like $300 or something. They're like, oh, they're yeah, like 80 was, bucks now. They're nothing. It's it so horrible. great. So, yeah. you know. They were way too expensive back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I have two running right here. So the first one we have running off of its charger, mm -hmm. and then we have an MK802. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So we just plug this in via the HDMI out, and then okay. we have USB right here for power. And then we also have this one for the mouse and the keyboard. So this has actually been done uh, before. I've seen an article on like how to do this, but we took a totally different take here, didn't we? Yes, we did. So with this one, and it's a little bit jittery because this is an older device that I have, but mm -hmm. the Motorola laptop you can see on here. Yeah. Oh, that's Android. Yeah, I'm running Android. I have the mouse working, so I can play Angry Birds on here or whatever I want, you know, get into the Google Play Store. Simple, simple, easy, easy. And it runs for like 
I think they tote eight hours on the website for the Motorola Atrix lap dock. So um, I have to test it a little bit more to so find out how long you can get out of the MK802 and the Raspberry Pi. Well, the M internal battery on this guy is basically running both of these, yeah. either of these devices, either the MK802 or the you know, Raspberry Pi or whatever have you, just over USB. And right? we've been running Five it volts. for like half the day, so at least four I hours. Can't, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be somewhere near the claim. Like if they're claiming eight hours, maybe yeah. six, but still. It's pretty cool. So another interesting thing about this is since it has this proprietary craziness going on on the back of it, you need a couple of weird cables. Unfortunately, you can't really buy these cables anywhere. So either you can make them, which Autofruit, uh, they made this entirely really good tutorial online. And we have a link to that one in the show notes. Or we also created these ones. So. Okay, I must say, like, this was one of those things that is born out of necessity, like any geek where I was, uh, I was talking to Jason, I'm like, Dude, how cool would it be if we could, you know, like make this a little sexier because it was like six cables and adapters before and we've been able to do this with three and he's like, there's, it's, that would be stupid to yeah. make one set. So he's yeah. like, well, how about I make you a hundred? And I'm like, all right, that's <laughs> cool. So these are the most expensive cables ever if we don't get rid of 99 of them. So let's <laughs> hopefully do that later. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. But uh, otherwise, yeah, pretty cool basic idea, even if, you know, you don't get the sexy ones just with, uh, you know, it's like it's like when you used to go to Radio Shack and be like, I yes, need this to exactly. go to that. And they're like, well, we don't have a this to that. But if you go to this and this and that and that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that yeah, totally works. <laughs> yeah, i there. Radio Shack. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so we got these cables working, and then we plugged it into the Raspberry Pi. And the first thing we needed to do was actually install Kali Linux onto a little SD card. Now, the thing about this is you really want to get one of those um, Class 10 um, 8 gig SD cards or, or larger than that so that it installs correctly, and it's nice and fast on the lab dock once you start using it. So to install it, you want to use um, dftachh to check what, uh, basically, which SD it is, because you don't want to erase your entire hard drive, because that's no fun. Right, because in Linux land, unlike Windows, you don't get like a drive letter, CD, yeah. E, whatever. Yes, exactly. You get, um, you know, it, it'll show up as a device and slash dev. Yeah. A lot of times, like SD, SDA is not the one you want to format. No. Um, and so it's going to differ depending on how many hard drives you have in your system or whatever have you. Exactly. I've always found DFTACH to be the most convenient. Yeah, it is. You it's easy because it, it gives you the name of your SD card. So, for example, mine's was Canon because we use it for our Canon cameras. There you go. So I automatically knew SDB is the one that I needed. So after that, you use DD, another command in the terminal. Uh, to actually port your image onto the SD card and, you know, make it a nice little package. And you just grab this image package. off of KaliLinux.com. Kali. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so it's um, D DD space if equals Kali, whatever the image is called, and then of equals slash dev slash SDB for me, and then BS equals 512K. Uh, IF is input file and OF is output, output file. file. Exactly, everything yes. everything in Linux is a file. Input Even and output. slash dev slash yep. SDB is treated as if it were a file, even though it's actually a, a SD card. Yes. Isn't that so cool? I oh, that. I love I'm it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Esoteric geekiness <laughs> on that. This is the stuff we do hack tips this is, about Linux Terminal 1. Right. For. This is the stuff, <laughs> though, that takes forever. I love DD. You can really F up a system with DD if you do it wrong, but yes. I love DD. It does take a while. And apparently, I didn't know this, but you let me know that DD actually does um, bit for bit copy, so there's no reason to format it. Beforehand. Yeah, unlike you know, unit booting or any of those things, you're not actually um, like making a FAT32 file system, copying over your, your sys Linux, and then making it bootable. You're actually yeah. like, if you were to do a DD from this SD card to another a similar SD yeah. card, it would be exactly the same. So once you get everything installed on your SD card, and it does take a little bit of time, it'll probably take, I think mine took up to 10 minutes or so to actually Whoa, copy really? over. It was, like it was probably less than that, but I left the room, so. Dude. <laughs> That's It that's might have insane. been like five or really? seven. Yeah. I mean, it's not, like that. it's not like this thing is like a quad core, but, you know, it's still. No, it was just copying to the SD card from my Linux machine, so. No, no, I'm talking about slow. booting. booting but, oh, yeah, time. booting yeah. off of this, it takes like two is minutes it at most. It's snappy? It's okay. It's kind of in the middle. I mean, Raspberry Pi is, they're not the fastest machine on the market, so you're not going to get crazy speeds out of it. Mm -hmm. But obviously, it's... It doesn't have that bad of lag, actually, just like opening up programs. But once you get into your programs, you're fine. Cool. So yeah, it's not that bad at all. So um, 
A couple of little notes also to mention, your host key, all of the host keys for the Kali Linux image are all the same. So you might want to change that. Hmm. And I also have all of that information in the show notes as well. And you can also change your password with passwd in the terminal. And what, that's super easy. What if you like keeping your password as Tor? Then oh, yeah, you could you keep it as Tor if you want to get hacked. It's always fun to get, get hacked. Hacked, you know? Yeah. That's like keeping your Wi-Fi pineapple with pineapples are yummy <laughs> as the password. Because that's super it's, smart. It's never gotten anyone in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So once you actually get Kali Linux installed, and we'll go over here to my little camera, I actually have wireless uh, or Wireshark running on here. And I also plug this into our local ethernet so that we have this running. Um, I'll go ahead and choose to start. And I'll already see packets running. So one I noticed was like, you know, Dropbox keeps on trying to update and stuff like that. So cool. yeah, Dropbox land sync discovery protocol. Bam. Wow. Yeah. There so you go. it works just fine. I had no problems with it. It comes with all the normal applications that you get with Kali Linux. So there's really no big changes as far as it goes. It even has this nice top 10 security tools so you can easily get in there and find whatever. I you love need. it. Yeah. I love it. You just turned a $40 Raspberry Pi B. I guess we should yep. say this only works with the B, obviously, B. because you have to have the yes. HDMI out. And I guess the 512 of RAM will help a little bit more than. I don't know if this would work on the, uh, the slightly <laughs> smaller version, but yeah, that's so cool. Thank you, yeah. Shannon, for breathing new this life is super into cool. old hardware and finally I love this doing because, something like, really cool with this guy. I could turn this into an air gap machine if I wanted to. Hey, that's not a bad idea, right? actually. I've got a Raspberry yeah, Pi. You've got another Raspberry Pi on your desk. For DEF CON? Totally. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's lightweight. The thing weighs like mm. less than two pounds. Sure. I could totally take this to DEF CON with me. Mm. Okay, cool. Well, we'll do that. Um, <laughs> Now stay tuned because in just a bit we're going to have trivia, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. I want to take a quick moment to thank one of our awesome sponsors, Domain.com, because they have been hooking Act 5 up for years, and I want to thank them for hooking us up with the .NETs. I've been using them personally for Darren Kitchen, for Hack Across America. .NETs are awesome. As you guys know, they're globally understood. They're one of the first top-level domains. They're actually the third most popular in the world. Hey, how awesome is that? Everybody's figuring out that these .NETs are a great alternative if the .com you want is taken or go ahead and protect your brand and get that .NET to go along with it. And uh, you can get them the same place that Shannon and I do over at Domain.com. They make it so easy to do business with them. They're affordable. I mean, $8.99 a year for a .NET, and that's before you get the Hack5 hookup. And they're totally active on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com. You'll see it's a really a fun place to do business. So they're huge fans of Hack5 and your guys. So they want to get you 15% off their already affordable domain names and hosting. All you have to do is go to hack 5 Dot org and, uh, and that's our website but you actually want to go to domain.com that's their website you can go to ours too and uh, use the coupon code hack5 at checkout h-a-k-5 that's 15 percent off and big time savings so don't forget to use the coupon code h-a-k-5 when you think domain names think domain.com Last week's trivia question was, what foundry created the Ubuntu typeface font found in Ubuntu operating systems? And the answer was Dalton Mag. Now this week's question is, the key size used for an AES cipher specifies the number of repetitions of transformation rounds that convert the input, called the plain text, into the final output, called the cipher text. Now what are the first three number of cycles of repetition? You can answer that at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies.